can Uranium Energy Corp provide life-changing returns? Can it 50x, 20x, 10x? Can Uranium Energy Corp provide life-changing returns? Well, it already kind of has since 2020. It went from 88 cents to $5.30 at 10x, right? So will it continue providing these life-changing returns? It all has to do with whether or not it's undervalued relative to the market and how explosive the potential upside is. There are pros and cons with this asset. Let's start with the pros and kind of what this company is all about is a uranium miner in the United States. They're creating the largest diversified North American focused portfolio. That is positive. We want to be in North America. The United States and Canada are dumping billions into their domestic uranium supply, mainly the United States. The most powerful country on the planet is investing heavily in uranium. They want these mines. They're doing everything they can to make these mines get uranium out of the ground. You say Uranium Energy Corps has been busy multiplying their total resources by 3x over the last year or so and increasing their production capacity by 4x. So they've just been expanding their portfolio. They're saying they have exposure to 230 million pounds of uranium and then another 103 million pounds of uranium inferred, right? So we're talking hundreds of millions of pounds of uranium that they have exposure to. So at $100 per pound spot price, let's say 200 million pounds, that is $20 billion of potential revenue, right? So talk about a call option on the price of uranium. The higher the price of uranium goes, any company that has good financials, that has exposure to hundreds of millions of pounds should do well. But the question is how undervalued are they currently? How much of this is already baked into the price? They also have 1.2 million pounds of uranium on hand physical. So they're just stockpiling hordes of underground and above ground physical uranium. So these are their acquisitions since 2017. They've been smart. They've been buying and building in the uranium winter. So when uranium was around $30 per pound, they did all these acquisitions, just stacking uranium cheap, right? This is where they are in terms of getting this stuff to production so they can finally start selling it. As investors, timing absolutely matters, right? So they have a Wyoming and Texas mine with production started. We're talking 80 million pounds of uranium production just getting started. Then they have advanced development at their Ask Athabasca project, their Arizona project, and they've just been expanding their resources in Paraguay and another Athabasca joint venture, right? So if nothing else, this company did a phenomenal job of just stockpiling uranium cheap and uranium assets cheap in the uranium winter. I showed you how they have over a million pounds of uranium on their balance sheet at $100 per pound. That's over $100 million of potential revenue. In fiscal year 2023, they had $164 million record revenues from spot uranium uranium market sales. So they just did an incredible trade buying this stuff super cheap. So that's where the company is currently just the powerhouse call option on the price of uranium. What about the financials? What about their earnings? When will they finally start cash flowing? How long will it take to get this into production? Will they be forced to dump shares on the market to finance all their ambitious plans? Well, this is the balance sheet. The most recent one was as of April, 2024. And so as of April, 2024, they had total current assets of $155 million, total current liabilities of $14 million. They were just swimming in assets, plenty of liquid assets, total assets of $878 million, total liabilities, 99 million. So strong financial position, strong balance sheet. But again, keep in mind, right? How much is all this going to cost? $155 million of current assets and total current liabilities of, of 14 million, right? So they really, at this point, at this point in time, as of April, this report was published in June. As of April, they had about $140 million, right? Maybe not quite enough money, but overall a strong position regardless. Still a strong call option on the price of uranium. And here's their income statement. What have their earnings been? Well, for the nine months ended April 30, this is what they've been up to. They have lost $37 million from operations. So they haven't had practically any sales in 2024, but they've managed to lose $37 million and the mineral property expenditure. So they spent $21 million on expanding and developing their mineral properties. And obviously they're spending that on producing and developing their assets, making them more marketable and profitable.
Now, this is where it gets very interesting. Why do they have such a strong balance sheet? The answer is because if, you, if we look at their cash flow statement, where are they getting their cash from? They issued $160 million worth of stock in 2024. The nine months ended April 30th, right? These guys are printing shares into the market, $160 million. As we saw per their balance sheet, they have over $100 million of liquid assets. Well, practically all of that came from share issuances. In 2023, they issued another $65 million worth of shares, right? So these guys are printing shares, right? Now it hasn't hurt their share price that much at all, right? Since 2020, this thing has done nothing but go up. Again, it went from 88 cents to $8. So they printed shares at a high share price, which is not a t is, which is way better than them printing them when the share price is spiraling down. So that's how they're raising capital. They have plenty of solid assets though. So it doesn't change necessarily anything at this point. But it is important to know because we wanna know how much more dilution could be on the way for this asset. Well, this is their revenue estimate from Wall Street analysts. So current year revenue, they're expected to generate $38 million. That's the average estimate. It does seem like they're gonna start getting into production. Now in 2025, for the entire year of 2025, they're only expected to generate $109 million of revenue. So they're really not going to be generating that much revenue for the entire year of 2025, which means it's going to take time to get these assets into production. What are their earnings going to be going forward, right? Well, according to analysts, no earnings in 2024 and $0.04 cents per share for the entire 2025. So really not much going on in terms of earnings or in terms of cash flow for the next year. Here's the reality of this company. If you deduct their liabilities from their assets, they have like $700 million worth of equity in this company. But the market cap of this company is $2.2 billion. Next year, they're supposed to earn four cents per share. Each share is $5. So right now they're trading at like a hundred times price to earnings, price to next year's earning ratio. So it's pretty richly valued just based on that. Now, yes, they have over a million pounds of uranium that they're sitting on. What they're probably hoping for is for that to skyrocket in value and for that to finance a lot of the future build that is needed. But the reality is it seems like a small amount of cash, right? In nine months, they lost about $37 million. So they're losing money. So that $100 million will be dwindling over time unless they can start generating cash, which, is, which it doesn't seem like they will, at least through 2025. Nothing significant. Here's a summary of what is going on with this company and what may be next. On January 16, 2024, we announced restarting uranium extraction at our fully permanent and past producing Christensen Ranch mine in Wyoming. The first extraction is expected during August 2024 and will be funded with existing cash in the company's balance sheet, which they primarily acquired from printing shares. But that's fine. So at least they can get into production in 2024. That is a huge positive. They don't need to dilute further to make that happen. Now, here's the reality of what is next, right? Our operations are capital intensive and we will require significant additional financing to continue with our exploration and pre-extraction activities and acquire additional uranium projects. Historically, we've been reliant primarily on equity financings. That's when they sell company stock, which in theory dilutes the value of the shares the current shareholders own. However, we have yet to achieve consistent profitability or develop consistent positive cash flow from operations. Our reliance on equity and debt financing, paying additional financing, would have a negative impact on our operations, including delays, curtailment, or abandonment of any one or all of our uranium projects. So they are heavily reliant on future financing. They're most likely not going to take on debt with interest rates this high. So they're most likely going to have to continue selling shares. I haven't really covered a company so far that's at risk of dilution, but this one seems like it is. Now again, they can get into production in 2024, so it might not be too significant. And when I say dilution, it's not like it's the end of the world. Nvidia has diluted its shareholders at one point. They've, they've dumped shares in the market. As long as you have an accretive dilution, meaning they sell shares, 
they increase the value of their company, then the value per share that each shareholder has actually goes up. So it's not really dilution, but still there is a big risk of that at this point. A billionaire looking at this company, let's say Jeff Bezos wanted to buy a uranium mine and he looked at this company and said, okay, it would cost $2.2 billion to buy this company. What would I get for that $2.2 billion investment. I would get $700 million worth of assets, including mineral rights and properties of $560 million. At the end of the day, that is the truth, right? So we've covered a lot of assets on this channel, a lot of different uranium miners. A lot of them are undervalued relative to the assets on their balance sheet. This one is not right? It's also, they're very clear that it's going to cost a fortune to get their many and extensive uranium properties into production. They don't currently have that. This company has more limited upside than the assets that are way undervalued compared to the, the assets they currently have, not where they could go. But this one is banking on just a massive spike in the price of uranium. That would solve all this company's problems. If the uranium spot price skyrockets, then their holdings are going to be worth an absolute fortune, including their physical uranium. And they're going to have plenty of cash to do whatever they want with. That is the vision for this company. That's why they are stockpiling uranium and it can work, right? As a call option on the price of uranium, this thing works. They're super leveraged to the price of uranium. So as this thing goes up, this thing will skyrocket. That's why it has skyrocketed in the past and 10X. Now, the question now is, would you rather buy this? Would you rather pay $2 billion for $700 million of assets, hoping that we get a skyrocketing uranium price? When there are other assets we covered that should outperform this one because they're way undervalued relative to the assets on their balance sheet, right? If you buy something undervalued, the undervalued asset has a lot more room to skyrocket, to outperform that overvalued asset. So that's just a fact at this point. Yes, it has a strong balance sheet. Yes, it's not going bankrupt anytime soon. Yes, it's a call option on the price of uranium, but it's also priced at a premium at this point, especially since they're only gonna be generating four cents a share in 2025. Five, right? So we have a whole year worth of them trying to con conserve capital, get these things producing, figure out different ways of financing. So there's more uncertainty with this asset than there is with others. Yes, it has plenty going forward. It's not going anywhere. The question is, is it is its upside limited compared to other assets that could massively outperform them? So if you want me to cover any other assets, just be sure to let me know. So many to get through. We take all the fluff and hype out of this market and look at really what is going on, which ones can provide those life-changing returns.